In this video, I hope to cover everything you always wanted to know about selection. Now, if you first start up SketchUp and you press the space bar, you get this dialog box. You're prompted to set your location, which is something a lot of times people forget. But I'd rather that it just gave me the selection tool right off the bat, because I've mapped the space bar to the select tool in my shortcuts. We're just going to have to work around this behavior, because as soon as you draw your first line, that behavior is cleared out. Now if I press the space bar, I'll get the selection tool. And I never have to see that dialog box again, unless I call for it explicitly up here under the Window menu. I like to use the selection tool as a sort of way to clear out the active command. Let's say I'm drawing a circle, and I'm done drawing circles. I don't want this circle attached to my cursor anymore. I'll press the space bar to go to the selection tool. Of course, you don't technically need to do this. You could go on to your next command. Let's say I'm going to use the Follow Me tool. I could do that, but I just find that pressing the space bar sort of helps me clear my mind and focus on the task at hand. Now, that being said, in Windows, the space bar doesn't always activate the selection tool. For some reason, it's a little bit finicky. That's why I've used letter Q to activate the selection tool in addition to the space bar in Windows. And that's something you can only do in Windows, is map two different shortcuts to the same command. In the Mac, you're limited. You only have one shortcut that you can use at a time. Okay, enough discussion. Let's take a look at a different file and learn some different selection modes. As I'm sure you're aware, you can click on a face to select it, or click on an edge to select it. If you click somewhere else, you make a different selection, and the previous selection is gone. If you double-click on a face, you get the face and its bounding edges. Those are the edges that define the face. Here's a curved face. If I double-click on it, I get the face and its bounding edges, but not the hidden edges inside. If I go up to the View menu and view Hidden Geometry, you'll see that there are additional softened and smoothed edges in here that I'm not selecting. If for some reason you wanted to get all of the edges involved in this curved face, you'd have to right-click on the face and choose Select, Bounding Edges. And now we've selected those hidden edges as well. Triple-clicking results in all of the connected edges and faces being selected. Technically, you can deselect by pressing Command-Shift-A, but it's much easier just to click off to the side somewhere where there isn't any geometry. Incidentally, you can select all by pressing Command-A, and this is actually useful within a modeling context, such as a group or a component. If you press Command-A when you're in a group or component, you'll get everything in there, but you won't get everything that's outside of the context. Next, I'll deselect all by clicking off to the side, and then I'll right-click on this curved face and choose Select, Connected Faces. Now, this is something that you can't get by clicking. I'm getting all of the connected faces that are adjoining this one. That is, this curved face itself, these two, this one, and the top face. None of the faces on the back are selected, because they don't share common edges with this face that I right-clicked on. I'd get a different selection if I right-clicked on, say, this face, and chose Connected Faces. Notice that I'm actually getting one of the faces which are within this curved surface. It stops here at the first hidden edge. You can also select by material or layer. For example, I'll right-click on this red face and choose Select, All with Same Material, and I also get this other red face in my selection set. Similarly, I can select this right face, right-click, and choose Select, All on the Same Layer, and I get these two hexagons which happen to be on Layer 1. SketchUp doesn't have a lasso tool for selection. You can't make a crossing polygon or a fence like you can in AutoCAD, or a magnetic lasso like you can in Photoshop. Instead, you have to use the Rectangular Selection window in combination with your point of view. So here I started making a selection from the upper left-hand corner, and as I dragged down, the selection window had a solid border to it. This is called a window selection, and it will only select things that are completely inside the window. Let's try that again. I'll start over here and drag down like this, and I'm only going to get that hexagon because it was the only thing completely inside the window. If instead I start dragging the window from the lower right-hand corner, you'll notice that its border is dashed. This indicates a crossing window. Anything that this marquee touches or crosses will be selected. This is just like the behavior in AutoCAD, 
and it should be very familiar to you if you've used that program. It's important that you change your point of view when you're making selections in SketchUp. Here, by rotating my point of view, I can more easily select all of these surfaces on this wall because they coincide with the geometry of the rectangle that I can drag out with the window selection. There are three keyboard shortcuts for selection, and these can be used on their own or in conjunction with regular windows and crossing window selections. First, there's the Shift key. It's sort of your multi-purpose selection tool, and it allows you to build up a selection set. I'll hold down the Shift key, and you'll see that there's a plus slash minus attached to the cursor. This means I can add or subtract to the selection so I can build up a complex selection set. I'll double click here to remove this face and its connected edges from the set. Or maybe I want to add these additional edges just by clicking on them. The Option key puts you in additive mode, so anything that you select will only be added. Shift Option puts you in subtractive mode. Now I can only subtract from the selection. Option and Shift Option are best used in conjunction with Windows. So for example, if I want to add to the selection, I'll just hold down the Option key. If I want to subtract from the selection, I'll hold down Shift Option. There are a few other selection tricks that have to do with styles. I'll open the Styles window and edit the current style. Go to the face level here. I'll switch into wireframe mode. Deselect. Just move this over. Zoom out a bit. And I'll make a regular window selection around everything. I'm getting all of the edges. I'll go back into the normal view here, which includes texture mode. And now I have a selection set which includes all the edges but no faces. X-Ray is a powerful selection and visualization mode, and you can toggle it on by clicking this button. You can also press the X key. So I typically don't open the Styles dialog box for X-Ray mode. In X-Ray mode, you can see through faces to the edges that are beyond. So for example, in X-Ray mode, I can select this circle, even though it's obscured by this rectangular face. I can't, however, select that circular face. If I try to select it, I actually get this rectangular face because it's in front. I'd have to orbit around here and select the face manually if I wanted to get that. So X-Ray mode is useful for edges only. It's also useful to help you see what's actually happening. If I make a selection here in the normal mode, and make a window selection around this red face, it looks to me like that's the only thing that was selected. Toggling into X-Ray mode shows you the truth. I also selected all of these edges on the backside. To get rid of them, it's necessary to orbit into some orientation where I can isolate that geometry. Then I'll press Option Shift to ensure that I only subtract from the selection set. And I'll make a window and then closes those things to remove them from my selection. There are a few useful selection scripts that I'd like to draw your attention to. The first one is very simple and it's called Invert Selection. It's written by Trevor Ian Grant, or TIG, as he's known in the forums. I'll right-click on this face and choose Invert Selection, and it will get everything but that. And this works on faces or edges. Here I'll make an edge selection. I'll right-click on the edge itself and choose Invert Selection. I get everything but those edges. And this works within the context of groups and components as well. Another script is called Quick Selection. I'll right-click and choose it here from the context menu. And this is written by Didier Bourg of the Ruby Library Depot. This is like your Swiss Army knife for selection. It has all kinds of options in here. Start a new selection. You can add to the current one and so on. You can search through all the visible objects or you can limit it to only the invisible layers or whatnot. You can select different object types. Here in this case, maybe I'll just select all the faces. OK. It pops back up, so you have to cancel out of it after you've made a selection. And it tells you how many objects you have. Here I have all of the faces in the model. So that's a very powerful tool. The last script that I'll demonstrate is Selection Memory by Jim Foltz. It comes in the form of a tool palette. The idea here is that this functions like a calculator. 
I don't know if you're familiar with scientific calculators and how you can store a number in the memory. Well, this works just the same with selection sets. So it doesn't offer any new way to select, merely a buffer that stores a selection set for you. And this can be quite useful, especially if you spend time building up a complex selection set. You don't want to have to go do that again. So let me just demonstrate it. I'll select this face, hold down the shift key and select some other faces and their edges. And then I'll press MS to store that in the memory. I'll deselect. And then I could go ahead and continue to work all day, come back here later and realize I wanted to get that selection back. I can press Memory Recall and the selection is restored. Let's say that I want to add something to the selection. I'll go ahead and hold down the Shift key, double click on this other hexagon to add it to the selection set. Then I'll press the M plus button to store that in the buffer. Then later on I can recall that and you'll see that this hexagon has been added to the set. Let's say at this point I decide that I want to remove something from the selection set. Let me deselect and I'll double click on this face to get the face and its edges. Then I'll press the M minus key to subtract that from the buffer. Recalling from the memory shows you the result. Using these three scripts you should be able to select just about anything and store it in memory for later reuse. Like most tools in SketchUp, the Eraser tool has many different functions. The most obvious of these is to erase edges. And you can do this simply by clicking on edges. If you click on internal edges, it will erase them. If you click on edges which define faces, it blows away the faces. Note that there's no way to actually delete faces directly. Instead, you must use the Select tool, and then press the Delete or Backspace key to get rid of faces. You can also use the eraser to hide edges. Hold down the shift key when you're using the eraser and you can hide individual edges. Notice that there's still a shading change here because we have two different flat surfaces. If we use the option key, we smooth and soften edges instead. This has a different effect. The edges are hidden, yes, but the surface has been softened so that it seems round. You can see the transition up here because we merely hid the edge, but down here we softened the edge and we don't perceive it as a facet. If I unhide by pressing Shift H, all of the geometry that was formerly hidden reappears, including these hidden edges. The Eraser tool can also be used to restore edges that have been smoothed or softened. Press Option Shift together and then you can drag over these hidden edges and they'll reappear as visible edges. The eraser tool can also be used in a scrubbing fashion. It's almost like painting. Go ahead and drag over the surface and you'll be selecting various edges for either deletion, for hiding, or for smoothing and softening. The eraser has one other little known ability and that is it functions as a selection tool. Use the eraser tool to drag out a selection just by painting over a bunch of edges. Before you let go of the left mouse button, Right click at the same time and you'll get this context menu. Now here I got Entity Info. Notice that it did not erase the edges. Another way of working with this is to use the Eraser tool, make a selection, right click, and then hit the Escape key just to cancel out. You sort of short circuit the eraser so that it doesn't actually erase anything, but now we have a selection that we made by painting. Kind of a neat trick.